learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. So she had a pretty serious medical emergency the other day, and I'll get more into that in a little bit. But I wanted to come down here and check on the chickens because this morning I noticed one of the roosters was picking on what we're calling little girl. When I talk about these roosters, I'm talking about the uh, more mature or the older chickens that we've got. They were pulling feathers off of her, and that's an indication that they're not getting enough protein in their diets. So there's a little girl that just flew out, and you immediately saw Frenchie go after her. They pick on her. You can tell, I think, you should be able to tell, she is smaller than that hen. They pick on her, not so bad that it's dangerous. They're not hurting her. They're not uh, making her raw or making her bleed or anything. They just bully her. The indication when they're eating feathers means that they're not getting enough protein. And there's a lot of ways you can give them protein. Some cheap methods are, I threw hot dogs out here. I had some hot dogs in the refrigerator. So I just threw some out here and they all ate the hot dog. You can give them cat food. And there's just all kinds of different methods. You can literally give them food, food scrap. Bacon grease is another option. They didn't eat all the hot dogs. That's a good sign that they got their fill. I've also ordered another one of these tents because we're going to need a bigger chicken run. Now that we have more chickens, we're going to need a bigger chicken run. And this was such a great handy uh, setup. I really liked it a lot. And we can tie two of them together. They can have full run of it or we can separate them. Now I could have built something. I did build something and it cost near as much building something as it did to buy this thing. This was only, what, $80 I think. It was pretty inexpensive. This one here was free but the new one I got was $80. It keeps the predators out of it. Uh, during the day, you know, the birds and the bird of prey. At night, they all go into the chicken coop, so they stay safe in there. And then we're gonna analyze if we need to make the chicken coop bigger. Of course, we got the camper that we're using as a shed now, the homemade camper and a chicken coop. Now we wanna use the camper to raise newer chickens so they don't have to mingle with these guys. Wait until they get bigger and then we can introduce them. But when we bring all the chickens in here, I'm not sure this is big enough. I mean, I've done the Google searches and it clearly indicates it's not big enough. But Carol and I have had chicken coops this size before. I had 15 or 16 chickens in it and it never seen, and ducks, I should say. And she had 25 chickens in one this size. So if I redo the roosting post, I have roost in there uh, made out of grapevines. If I put them at a slant, I can get more in there that might work out better. If not, then I'm just gonna add on an extension to the back of the chicken coop. I can add on four feet, pretty easy. And I can still move it around. You can see, I think you should be able to see it's got wheels on it. I still should be able to move it around easy. Uh, I'm gonna put some windows in this at some point somehow. I got uh, that clear PVC that I put on my porch roof. I think I'm gonna use that to put windows on. See, there's Frenchie, he's eating a feather. Oh, he dropped it, good. And so this is what I was talking about with the camper. These guys are eight weeks old now. We should be able to integrate them with the other chickens in about two weeks. We've got it all sheltered now so they can't get any insulation and you know make themselves sick or anything. We're gonna clean this up a little bit up here. That's where we were storing all our stuff. And I think we're gonna make this a permanent chicken shelter for smaller chickens or broody chickens. We can do that as well. And it's real nice, they can roost right up here. And the nice thing is, is this has an air conditioner in it. We're gonna leave the air conditioner in this. That way it gets too hot in here while they're brooding or doing whatever they need to do. We can turn on the air conditioner. And then if I decide that I need to make coop bigger, I can bring the chickens in here until I get that accomplished. That way they're not hurting each other. But I don't think we're gonna have a problem. We'll see, we're just gonna experiment, see how many chickens we can get in there safely without them pecking each other. And when I have the windows in there, then we'll know for sure that I can watch them. All right, so this is the little girl. And look how calm she is. Isn't this something? I mean, they're, they're hard to catch, but once you catch them, they're just so calm and peaceful. The other day we had a problem with little girl. And she just wasn't doing well. She was really lethargic, not moving around a lot. She was staying in the coop, not eating. Like I said, she just bullied more than the others because she's smaller than the others. So she's just last in the pecking order. She's last to eat, she last to get the good stuff, she last to get the treats. So what she does is eat a lot of grass. Well, grass is good for them, but if they eat too much, it can clog up their crop. So what the crop is, is a little pocket right here. And all day long, that pocket gets filled up with everything they eat. And you'll actually see it swell. 
It's right here on the right side of the chicken neck, and you can you can feel it as it gets they, the longer the day goes on, the bigger it gets. There it is. And so what the crop does is when they go to sleep at night, the crop separates the food. Is my understanding. I'm not a vet, so. But it's my understanding they got two stomachs and, and the finer stuff goes into the one stomach and then the other stuff that doesn't get ground up very well goes into the gizzard. Now the gizzard has muscles around it and inside the muscle sac is another sac where all the food goes down and that muscle grinds up all that food so that you got to give them grit and grit is just nothing more than rock. She's getting a little upset about something. It's just basically rock. And they eat that and so when the food goes down to the gizzard with the rock it sits there and it it chews it up basically because they don't have teeth occasionally both the gizzard or the crop can get impacted is what it's called now the crop is more likely to get impacted they just pack themselves so full now with grass what happens is that they eat these long strings of grass and it just doesn't go anywhere it stays there and since she's so bullied she got impacted. Now, impaction can really be a serious problem. Uh, it can lead to difficult breathing, heart attacks, and the same with the gizzard. Now, with the gizzard, what you want to do is you want to try to get that to move out of there. You can actually make them vomit. They don't have a gag reflex here. so But you can make them vomit. There's videos on how to do that if, uh, if you can't get it to go down. But the first thing you want to do is you want to get a little syringe like this and get oil or honey honey oil mix, water. You want to get fluids down in there to loosen up that crop. Now this isn't too hard. You just kind of hold them a bit. Don't want to get them in the eyes. And you open up their mouth just a little. She's really fighting it today. And now remember, you don't want to just choke them down. You just want to get a little water down it and she'll swallow it. And then she'll relax and you just keep doing that. And then you can start working this out. And you just rub it down, rub it down. It's on the right side, and you'll be able to feel it. In the evening time, this pocket, you will actually see it. You can see it bulge out because they've eaten all day long and it's collected that food all day. And in the morning, that pocket should be empty. If it's not, then you know it's definitely impacted. If you see that bulge in the morning, and you need to work on that right away. Otherwise, she's going to start laboring, breathing. Like I said, she was lethargic. And this is probably one, two o'clock, so she'd been eating grass most of the morning and it, it choked her up. And we were able to loosen it up enough where she was more active. She walked around on the porch real slow at first. We'd loosen it up a little bit, give her some water and honey and vegetable oil we gave her. And then she started getting more lively and more lively. And eventually she crossed the bridge and she was back over there eating. And I thought, okay, well now we need to get her. And she was hard to catch. Now if it gets too impacted where they're starting to really get into labored breathing, if this doesn't work right away, you may end up having to take it to a vet. And what they'll do is they'll actually put an incision in here and, and get that out. Now, the second most serious thing, and th this is a problem if you're feeding your chickens grass, and we do, is impacted gizzard. Now, the gizzard is way down here. So it goes from the mouth to the crop, stored there, and then right here is the gizzard. Now, what you're gonna see is in the morning time, the crop is empty, you won't see the bulge, but they're having that labored breathing. There's other things that can cause labored breathing, but one of the things you need to worry about is the gizzard. And that's probably the most likely thing if you're feeding them grass. Of course, there's gape worms and different viruses that could cause all this problem. So the first thing you wanna do is if they're having that labored breathing, get them separated from the other chickens in case it is a contagion. But the gizzard is a serious problem. And if you're grass feeding, all your chickens could have this problem. What you're gonna to wanna to do is on a, about every three days to a week, you're going to want to introduce vegetable oil or something greasy or lubricant into their food, into their diet. You can also put a little bit of Epsom salt and different things. So you're getting that gizzard to lubricate. What happens is that grass in there gets all dried out and it just locks up. The, the muscles in there with all that grit, also if they don't have enough grit, that's going to be another problem. And it's not chewing it up good enough so it can get down into the intestines. Okay, so like I said, vegetable oil, May, uh, molasses is another option, honey, uh, anything to get that lubrication down into the gizzard. What really causes this gizzard issue is if they're in tall grass or you've just cut the grass. What they do is normally they just clip off the tops of the grass, but when they get to the taller grass, they nip off the top, but then the whole stem breaks 
on that grass mm -hmm. and they'll chew all that up and, and shove it down there well that, that's just too much for the gizzard and all that grit that i showed you to grind up so it just it gets impacted so the only reason i'm really explaining all this to you is because i know a lot of you are wanting to live off grid and chickens is a big option and i've actually encouraged you to get chickens and so i want you also to know that there's potential risk with raising chickens i mean they're not the brightest animal in the world. I mean, you can train them and they're a lot of fun to be around and you can hold them and they're great, they're fun. But in the end, they don't have a very big brain. So they don't realize, oh, I'm full, I better stop eating. And then their crop gets impacted. There's not a lot of bugs out there when you have a mowed yard. So of course you gotta give them some protein. And then when they're getting bullied, they're gonna eat more grass than they're supposed to. And it's gonna clog up their gizzards. So you gotta really take care of them. They're not hard to take care of. So I hope I can encourage you to have a good time with your animals when you're living your dream. Thanks for watching.